So what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Chicago Black Delegation Podcast. And here we got we will be uh, checking out a um, news a spotlight on a Terrence Howard, a, a, a high school player that um, unfortunately um, well met his demise at uh, at the by at a car crash. But there's something really, really particular that I think a lot of Americans, Black Americans especially, should should be made privy of. So let's check it out. Friends of a college athlete and former Ridgepoint High football player are praying for a miracle. Well, that's after 19 year old Terrence Howard was critically injured while trying to help a motorist. It happened in North Carolina and now his family hopes they can bring him back home. Troy Kless joins us live in Missouri City with the story. Troy? Well, Mia and Len, here I am at Hall Stadium where Howard made plenty of memories on both the track and the football field. At Ridgepoint High School, he met his high school sweetheart and her parents who are speaking for the family tonight. He just wins people over right off the bat. Doug Tigtig and his wife Brooke met Terrence Howard years ago. He was a senior at Ridgepoint playing football and won them over as their daughter's relationship with Howard blossomed. Respectful, super funny, just life of the party, laughing all the time kind of guy. Um, and yes, and even though he was definitely here to see um, our daughter, he became um, our 16-year-old, um, the brother he never had, and became, uh, became kind of a mentor for him. Howard went off to Alabama, where he was a walk-on in football and ran track and field. But this offseason, he transferred to North Carolina Central, where he'd been given a full-ride football scholarship. He's excellent at track and field, but his, his passion is football. So that was really, really exciting um, for us to see that dream come true for him. But last week, his move to North Carolina became a nightmare. Tig Tig says Terrence was driving from Alabama to his new school when he got into a crash, and while checking on the driver, was hit by another car. Whenever he was picked up, um, he didn't have ID on him, and so he was... Um, you know, considered a John Doe. He was, you know, taken to one hospital and then um, transferred to another. And so I think it took some time for them to um, be able to contact his parents. Tig Tig visited Howard in the hospital. He's in critical condition, but still fighting. And now they're hoping a GoFundMe page will raise enough money for life-saving treatment and to get Howard back home. And with that comes, um, you know, the reality that we don't well, know, know what's going to happen, but we do know that if anybody deserves a miracle, it's Terrence Howard, it is T. So I just checked that GoFundMe, which is on KHOU.com and has raised nearly $37,000. But again, the medical care and treatment that Howard needs is not cheap. So but I'm told that they are receiving prayers and support from many people all around the country, including former Alabama head coach, Nick Saban. Live in Missouri City, Troy Kless, KHOU, Full of the News. They have the emotional support, hoping they get the financial support they need now. Thank you so much, Troy. You sound crazy, stuff. man. I know, right? I don't trust these hospitals, man. I'll tell you right now. You know, my mom always been about against the whole sign in the back of your things and be organ donor because she's always yeah. under pressure. They always tell you don't do that as a kid. Don't ever yeah. do that. What? Uh, when they ask you when you do your license, do you want oh, to be yeah. organ donor? You no. say no. I always take that shit so. off my. <clears throat> nope. Yeah, mom told me that. Mom told me the same thing as well. And it's like, man, you, you, I count. You know, at the time, I felt bad about it. like, man, what if somebody really do need those yeah. words like that? But I mean, you can you can tell your family do that after that you die. You don't have to do it on your license. So when you when you when you when like say if you die and they ask the family what to do with the body and the organs, they can if you and your wishes. You can still give your organs to you know what I'm saying. You don't have to do that right then. But and they say he had no gonna, identification, did he? Yeah, they didn't even know. Yeah, he had no identification on him. They didn't know he was. They, like they said, they moved from hospital to hospital as a John Doe. Hmm. That's good information, though. Uh, like I said, I think a lot of people probably did was under the impression that you had to make that decision uh, as he was alive or something like that. So mm -hmm. it's good that that's cleared up. Though. See, I'm sick and I'm about to die. You know, I can change that right then. There, you know, I ain't needing this no more. You can cut me up, do what you do, break them off to whatever you need it. Yep. So uh, news has it, and this came out. Um, it actually came out today. Mm -hmm. It was updated today, actually. Former Alabama football player Terrence Howard dies after being hit by a car. So, mm -hmm. um, so it's here. Here it reads: uh, Former Alabama football player Terrence Howard died last week from injuries sustained when he was struck by a vehicle in North Carolina, according to multiple, multiple records. Howard and te Texas native, who was a member of the Crimson Tide team, 
uh, as a walk on in 2023 transfer to North Carolina Central during uh, the off season. He was moved. He, uh, he was moving his belongings from Alabama uh, to North Carolina when the accident occurred. Uh, his mother told Houston's uh, CH, I mean KHOU 11 TV. Alabama football coach Kalen DeBoer addressed Howard's death to begin uh, his press conference on Sunday in uh, Tuscaloosa. Tuscaloosa. Uh, he, he, he says, uh, before I make comments on the, on the team, I do not, I mean, I do want to send along uh, thoughts and prayers, uh, DeBoer says. Terrence Howard, who was with us and transferred on the North Carolina Central, Carolina Central he did pass away, and he's got some guys uh, who are here on the team, close to him, and uh, and also think about him. Just want to send prayers and thoughts to the, to the family. Howard was uh, involved in a minor traffic accident near Salisbury, North Carolina, then got out of his car to check on the other driver. A third car struck, I mean, then struck him and critically injured him. Damn. Yeah. Try to be a good Samaritan, yeah. man. Got yeah, that's the worst thing right there. Yeah, you trying to have somebody else, man. Tell me about it. Uh, Howard was hospitalized for uh, with criminal, I mean, with critical injuries in Charlotte, where he later died. He was not carrying identification at the time of the wreck, so it took several days to notify his family. Howard did not play uh, in a game for Alabama as a true freshman defensive back in 2023, but did travel with the team to the Rose Bowl College Football play, uh, Playoff semifinal. He was um, he was reportedly set to be on full scholarship at North Carolina Central and uh, an HBCU school in Durham. Uh, a GoFundMe account in a Howard's name has been raised for more than forty six thousand dollars as of Sunday morning. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't tell you it doesn't tell you the full story. So there's a little bit more that I want to kind of show. I'm not. I can't show too much of it because it's a little bit. It's a bit on the uh, on the graphical side. On a on the rough side. So let me just uh, let me just real quick. You look for the video. No, uh, it's, it's it's right here. Yeah, good. Yeah. So uh, pretty much the same thing. Uh, this is what uh, sorry about that. This is what they don't show you though, right? And we ain't go. We can't play too much of this because you know this. You know we we gotta we kind of getting away with a little bit uh, a little bit too much here, but. Here's a video of uh, a family member um, resuscitating uh, Terrence Howard, trying to you know bring you know uh, put some life back into him. Uh, the nurses uh, won't refuse help. You know what I'm saying? So I uh, was like, kind of, but King, what was like the story behind this uh, video? I think you got more. You know, uh, they were saying that the, uh, they weren't trying to resuscitate him because uh, they were trying to take his organs. They wanted to uh, take his organs. Yeah, they, they refused to, uh, the nurses refused to do their job to resuscitate him. So therefore, the family stepped in trying to resuscitate the son. That's why you see the uh, the the young lady. I think that was a man. I'm sorry, that was a man. man. Yeah, the man. He was saying that he said we're doing your job, and they over there trying to give him manual CPR, trying to bring him back. So that goes along with what we were saying earlier. You know, don't put your name on that. Don't put your name on that list. You know what I'm saying? And uh, especially when I mean. What else can you say? I mean, I mean, it looks like the news was lying because they said it took a while to contact the family. Oh yeah, they, they were there when he's dying, so that they, they, everything <laughs> you see right here in this story is all a bunch of cat. Oh yeah, it's a I bunch mean, of cat. Well, they was waiting for him to die. But, but that's like going against medical code of ethics. Aren't they required, even by their own oath, to do what they can to save a life? Yeah, but they 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 they, just, they will let you die though. That's the point. That's why she stood to the side for those for organs. Huh? For those organs. Damn. They must have ran his blood. They knew his blood type, and somebody possibly important needed what he had. And they knew they can get that because, depending on what he put on his license, legally, they can they can take that. Legally, yeah. they don't have to ask the family. They can take it. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, like you said earlier, I would have picked this body up and I would have walked him back. Yeah, yeah, I would have walked that body right the fuck about it though. Buried him, buried him, buried him myself. Yeah, I agree. So, uh, so yeah, I definitely think people should have uh, definitely um, become more a little more privy to this uh, situation. There's, there's, I'm pretty sure there's more to Earth as well. But like, uh, I don't know what else to say. If everybody to, to like, I mean, collectively learn something from this. I mean, again, um, be on these uh, nurses and doctors' ass about uh, your loved ones. Uh, only, I mean, for them, sometimes it becomes uh, they become numb to it. You know what I mean? And it can be it can become a situation where uh, they just like, your loved one is just another it's a number, 
and uh, for you, that's not the case. So if you want it, I mean, I don't know what to say. You saw the man in the video. He he tried to do it himself. You know what I'm saying? And uh, he unfortunately uh, that brother didn't make it. And um, I mean, as these guys have said, uh, they pick the body up and and uh, make make sure those folks don't touch it. You know what I'm saying? They don't they don't get what they want at the end of the day. So any last statements about this? Well, she just said, man, prayers go out to his family, man. You know what I'm saying? That's just sad, man. Yeah, that that would have been, I couldn't, I couldn't even imagine being there with my child down like that. And watching the nurses just, just look at you. Stand there and look at you. Yeah. Yeah, it's fucked up.